will sing. My heart will sing, church. My heart will sing how I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord. Can we tell them, saints, church, tell them, I love you. I love you.
worship Him in your small and personal way. We lift up your voice. He is worthy. We exalt you, our King. There's no greater love than this. Jesus, Jesus, thank you for your love. We honor you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Welcome back, church. God bless you. Give your neighbor a, a wave. God bless. Sunday celebration, isn't it? Today is Communion Sunday, so of course we, uh, if you don't have one yet, uh, please just raise your hand. Somebody will give it to you. Today we are going to be partaking of the Lord's Communion. Keep them up. And also I'd like to give you a few moments to, uh, if you haven't done so, just kind of flip the first one so that when we actually have our communion, we won't have this noise around that we're, we're, we're opening them, but that's, that's still fine. So I just am giving you an opportunity to do that. Amen. Can we give God glory for the, uh, for the worship team again? Amen. Thank you, Pastor Brian, for leading. Again, we want to thank all of you. Today is the first Sunday of uh, Love Month. Yeah? Amen? Amen. Well, if you're here for the first time, thank you so much for coming. And for those who invited him, thank you. Can we give God glory for those who invited him? Yeah, I believe for the reservation, who's the, uh, who's the early morning, early bird uh, um, somebody got them? Who's the first one to sign up? Nobody yet? No, okay, so it's going to be later. Somebody, usually there's first someone that, will, that, that, assign, uh, that signed up for the, uh, uh, for the prize. It's beautiful. You don't want to miss that out. Amen. Month of, of month, huh? This is February, and so it's the love month. And so the theme for, our, for this month, as we are going through the year, it's greater, right? And so our theme for this month is greater love. Greater love. That's our theme for this month. And it has to do with us uh, loving God, loving our, of course, our loved ones, our family, and, and those that are around us. So greater love this morning. Next Friday, I mean, next Sunday is Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. You know what that means? Men or husbands, it falls on Sunday. Say, don't say, honey, it's Sunday, so we don't have to celebrate it. No, you're in trouble. All right? It's customary that men or husbands will give gift to their loved ones, spouses, isn't it? They give gift and usually consists of, of chocolate. VFS still open, chocolate. Uh, Payless is still open for, and then balloons. Flowers are gift. Amen. Somebody, some people love the flowers that, that are that are that are good for two days and then they're done. And some people are smart, saying, "Honey, don't give me any more flowers. Give me a plant like orchids that will last a lifetime." And so, and so do that. And then, of course, we have jewel wreaths. Those are things that that husbands or men give to their loved ones. And so you're thinking now, what am I going to give? But this morning, I'd like for us as a communion message that we will consider the greatest gift that God has given to show his love, isn't it? Before we can even conceive uh, the love that we have, we need to consider all the gifts that we have and then compare them to the one who gave his best, and that is Jesus Christ. And so greater love, greater love for us if you have your Bibles with you, Romans chapter 5, verse 8. This is going to be our foundational verse this morning. Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says there, But God clearly, clearly shows and proves his own love for us. Now, this is the Amplified Version. It says there, But God clearly shows and proves his own love for us 
by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Man, what amazing that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for you and me. Let's bow our heads, please. Father, again, we thank you as we, as we prepare for your word and even to, to celebrate communion. Lord, I pray that you will clear up our thoughts and mind and have us focus upon the greatest love of all. We want to thank you, God, for your people this morning. And even those that are online, would you please speak to them by your word? For you are not limited. You are omnipresent, omniscient. Lord, you know everything. And so I pray, God, that you will remove any clouds of doubts and anything that might distract us this morning and help us focus upon the greatest love of all. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone will say, amen and amen and amen. Well, the message this morning is simple. It says, God is love. Communion message, God is love. We're saying God is love, right? And when we consider that, God is love. When we begin to understand that because God is love. But the question is this, when we love someone, is it the same thing as God when he loves us? Now, the question that we need to pause this morning is this, why would God love us? Why does God love us? Isn't it? Have you considered that? Why would God love us. If you talk, take note of, of a person that is in love, there's always a point of attention or focus. The focus is there so that they will have love. A man will see a woman, whether at the school or at the mall or the airport, they will see that, and then, then visually they begin to say, that is a beautiful person, a target. Whose, whose intention is, is the target, eventually that person will win the prize, P-R-I-Z-E, right? Almost instantly, you begin to say, what will I do? And so there's a process that you need to do to convey your love. And most of the time, when you say to someone, I love you, some people will say, it's not enough. You have to prove it. Amen? So therefore, when we begin to say, I love you, it has to be backed up by what? Actions. Words are empty, people say. It has to be what? Backed up by actions. And you know, and I know this already. Women will say, I don't really care. I don't really care if you don't give me anything. But a man needs to listen that when they say, I don't really care, they say, if you don't give me anything, you're dead. <laughs> I'm just saying this because I have lived with the same woman for many, many years. And she can remember how many. She can remind me. Because I know when I say I love her or any of our parents or our friends, there has to be something to back it up. And when we say I love you to someone, forgetting their birthdays, forgetting Valentine's Day, forgetting those special moments, then that is not really love. And when we ask, say that, there has to be action, right? And when you see someone, why do I love a person? Well, most of the time when we love a person, there's what you call a sense of reciprocity. I love you. You love me. We are a happy family. This sound so? So therefore, when we give, we expect something in return. That is love. So if you don't love me, I don't love you. So if I love you, I love you. But if I love you, you need to know that also you have a responsibility to love me. And if I give you a gift on your birthday, expect this in my birthday, you will have a gift. I need a gift also, right? And that is the love. But is that the same word that God is using? And the question again, we will say, why would God love me? Why would God love you? In all the purity of our hearts, why would God love you? And when we say God is love, what does that mean? Is it just a word? So we will go into 1 John chapter 4, verse 9 and 11. He says this very, very specifically. He says, the one who does not love has not become acquainted with God. In other words, does not and never did know him. So if you see a person, perhaps they don't love because of situations. Therefore, the final authority is an, is an experience with God. It says, for God is what? Is love. It's not the reverse. Love is God. No, we will find out later on. When, when the word says God is love, the 
meaning's different. And it says here, for God, it says here, uh, for he's the originator of love. God is the originator of love. He preexisted. God preexisted all the creation, and therefore, love is one of his creation. And it says here, it is his, it, it, it is his enduring attribute of his nature. In other words, God cannot help but love. Because if he stopped loving, where are we? It is his nature to love. It is his nature to love. And so, therefore, if you are a son or daughter of God, there has to be a glimpse of love without anything in return. It is his very nature. It is part of his. He is the one. And how do we know that? Continue on, it says here, this is how God showed his love among us. You see that? God is love. He didn't stop there. There has to be what? An action. An action word, an action, it says here, a verb. It says here, he showed his love. He sent his only and his one and only begotten son into the world that we might live through him, Jesus. And then number 10 says here, verse 10, this is Love. Who is John? He's the writer also of the Gospel of John. He's the one that is closest to God. He said, this is love, not that we love God first, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. And says here, dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. We have come to know this. It says here on the verse 16, it says here that, that by this we know personally, come to know any personal observation, experience, have believed with deep, consistent faith the love which God has for us because God is love. The one who abides in love abides in God, and God abides continually in him. See the word? God is love. Manifested. Because why? Because if we are only basing ourselves on our own, we cannot do it. There are really many people that are difficult to love. And only if we feel like loving them when they are loving, then it's not complete. But our God says, God is love. What does that mean? God is love. It says here, when we begin to understand that, if you see the word, for God so loved the world, is it this same word? We are using different Greek words. Where there, there, there are many Greek words for this word love. Here are these, okay? Eros is the first one. The first word that we use is eros. In other words, this is the physical that you see. It says, I love you because you're ugly. No, you don't say that, right? I love you because you don't brush your teeth. No, I love you because what? It's the physical good attribute that we see, eros. Now, the word erotic is not a bad word before, but they made bad. Eros is the one... A man and a woman fall in love, a husband and wife fall in love. That is the word eros, the romantic type. If a person says, well, I don't have to tell my wife I love her, she knows it. My friend, you're in trouble. Amen? The women are sensitive to the ears of love. Don't stop. I know, I'm, I'm, not, going, I'm not talking about Valentine's yet, but... For all of you, that man, if you haven't said I love you to your loved one, repeat it. You don't, it is the word I love you. It's the word that will never lose its power. It will something that will always be soothing. I love you. So therefore, the second one is this, phileo. is the word Philadelphia, loving your brother, sister. It is different from eros. But we say, I love you. When we see brother, we say, brother, hey, love, I love you. You hug them, I love you. When you say, I love you, it doesn't mean that I love you erotically. I love you because you're, we're bonded together. Man, don't be embarrassed to say, I love you to another man. For those of you, perhaps you have parents that never say, I love you. Parents, tell your sons and daughters, love, I love you. As a matter of fact, if you have to, kiss them. 
kiss them here, kiss them everywhere. You know, boys, oh, dad, no, they, they will struggle. But you know what? Really, really? They love that. Yeah. Boys grow up, but we never lose the side that we need to be loved as well. So if a woman stops loving the husband, guess what? They're, they're failing. Man, if your husband used to be barrel-chested now because of gravity, they're now a little bit round side. Mm, love them still. They're in shape. Round is a shape. <laughs> and then the one that we are talking about is agape. Mm. When we say God is love, it's not because we are wonderful. Because his very nature demands his very nature. He cannot get away from that love. And that is the reason why he loves us. None of us will pass if God chooses between us. None. But he loves anyway. Romans 5.8 says this. What? He proved his love. We are the prize. But now... Let us look at Romans 5, 8 says here, but God clearly shows and proves his love, his own love, by the fact that while we are still sinners, you know what that means? When we were still not even concerned about him, he loved us by what? By sending an action, by sending the best, by sending the price, P-R-I-C-E. We are the object of his love, he wants us to be the prize, but there has to be a prize that he has to do to prove his heavenly love for you and me. Perhaps that's the reason why when we are born again and we understand that God loves us, we change. We begin to say, Lord, I love you. Not because we deserve it, when we realize that we don't deserve it. And you begin to say, God, how good you are. So the first, the four word, yeah, Christ died for us. That is the price of love. That is the price that God the Father has to give. So let us look at that first one. It says here, the person who died, who, who died Jesus Christ. Sometimes when there's action, we begin to say, well, something, maybe it's not really that difficult. Maybe it's not something that is, that is expensive. The person who died, he's God himself, right? It says in Isaiah 53, verse 3, it says here, He was despised and rejected by man, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. That is a prophetic word that Isaiah spoke out looking ahead of Jesus Christ. See, during in the, uh, when you have the Lenten season, Pilate washes his hands and says, I don't see any what? I don't see any guilt in him. What do you want me to do? Do you remember that? And the people says, crucify him. Crucify him. Who is this? Jesus Christ. Isaiah 52, 14, 14 says this as well. Isaiah uh, 52, 14, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any man and his form marred beyond human likeness. You know, when Jesus Christ was sentenced, they flogged him. They, they says, a king has to have a crown. They took a crown of thorns. Some people say it might have been two inches long and they pressed it against his head. And so the blood started and his body and his mind and his heart. He began disfigured everything that was because the Roman soldiers were trained to put the highest punishment to anyone. God the Father saw us as, a, as his prize, but he has to pay the price. Jesus. His mind was disfigured. He couldn't even see him. Isaiah 50 verse 6 says, I offered my back to those who be, be, beat me, my cheeks were to those who pull out my beard. I did not hide my face from mock and spitting. This is God himself. This is Jesus Christ for a moment. He didn't. When you begin to understand that, and that's the reason why we go to church. Why do you worship God? Why do we so, we fall in love with him as men and women? 
Because there's a price that was paid 2,000 years ago. Because God sees you as an object of his love. But because there's sin, there has to be the price somebody has to pay. Somebody that is pure, somebody that is holy, somebody that has never been immersed with sin. And it's only Jesus Christ that is pure and holy and God himself that has to take our place. Isaiah 53 reminds again, he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. The prize. How many of us will bear the type of punishment? We will rebel. But God the Father saw it that Jesus Christ is the only way. That's the reason why every knee shall bow, and I and all the towns will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, not only earned it, he's, the, he's our God. He, he did not waver because he saw you, the prize. He saw us. So that is no longer eros. That is no longer phileo. It is agape love. That is the reason why when you repeat the word, God is love, remember, he didn't have to, but he saw us helpless. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23 reminds us, he said, when they hurled insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. In other words, look at this. God, Christ died willingly for you and me. We sing that God is love, God is love. Do we really understand? Because there's no love without the cross. He died willingly for me and you. He died willingly for you and me. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 says, It is appointed to man once to die, right, for us. When we die, it is appointed. We don't have any choice. It is an appointment. But Jesus Christ says this Isaiah, uh, in John chapter 10. He says this. He said, no one take. My life for me, but I lay down on my own accord. Summarize this is this. For us, death is an appointment. But for Jesus, it is a choice. Death is an appointment. And that's the reason why Jesus Christ, even, uh, uh, even John the Baptist, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And Jesus Christ said, unless a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. What does that mean? A person that is born, born once only will die twice. A person that is born once will die twice. What do you mean by twice? Number one, it is a physical death. And number two, the eternal death. But a person, if he's born twice, will die once. Amen? If you're born Twice, you'll die once. Born in the flesh and born in the spirit, you only die once. That is a physical death, and you will be for eternity. Amen? Amen? Then the second one is this. The death he died. Philippians says this. After he was found in terms of his outward appearance as a man for a divinely appointed time. God is still God. Jesus is still Jesus. He's God. And so for that limited time, he submitted himself to be what? To be man. He humbled himself because right now he's God and he became man. It's like he condescended to become lower. He humbled himself. He says here, by becoming obedient to death, to the point of death, even death on the cross. In other words, we are supposed to be at the cross this Christ died for you. In other words, Christ died in humiliation and agony. Christ died in our humiliation and agony. There's this writer, a raider, Cicero, uh, a Roman uh, a raider. He says this, crucifixion, the most cruel and disgusting punishment for any man. Listen to this. Crucifixion is the most disgusting and cruel 
of all punishment. As a matter of fact, it says it is a crime to put a Roman citizen in chains. It is an enormity to flog him, sheer murder to slay one. What then shall I say of crucifixion? It is impossible to find a word for such an abomination. Let the very mention of the cross be far removed, not only from the Roman citizen's body, but from his mind, his eyes, and ears. It is by law, no Roman citizen must suffer through crucifixion. The only people that suffer crucifixion are the thieves, are the people that are in rebellion, are the people that are godless. Those are the people that deserve crucifixion. And the Roman soldiers perfected the highest level of punishment before crucifixion. And so it says here, crucifixion is when a person, the longest time, the more, the longer the punishment, the better, because they want that person to die in agony. So our God, Jesus Christ, took that for us. When you say God is love, I pray that you will and I will realize the extent of the prize because God sees us as his prize. We are. How did he die? Let's look at it. The way he died as well, we can see this. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We are all like sheep. Have gone astray. Each of us has turned in own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All of us. Jesus Christ became man for a season, for a moment. What? Because no one, there's no option B. God has to be man, Jesus Christ himself, so that he will die for us. And all the punishment of us all was laid upon him. None. He died. The way he died, he was so marred. Christ died for us. In our place, our substitute. In the old covenant, God has been projecting to his people how sin can be removed or covered by the lambs or goats slaughtered. But that is just to make you feel. But the forgiveness of sin is that still there. The sin, the iniquity, you know, the guilt is there. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, what did he say? I don't know him. He's my cousin. I never met him. I didn't see him. When, Je when John the Baptist was baptizing, he saw a person. The only difference is the dove that Holy Spirit was upon him. And he says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. What does that mean? He will be one day fulfilling the old covenant of animal sacrifices once and for all to take us, our sins. Jesus Christ, he died for us. So number four is this. For whom did he die? Right? To the, to the rich people? To the good people? To all those that are well off? No. The Word of God in Romans chapter 5, verse 6 and 8 tells us this. While we were still helpless, powerless to provide for our salvation, at the right time, Christ died as a substitute for the what? Ungodly. Call someone ungodly and you will not go home. Because it's a fighting word. Her heretic. Ungodly. Sinners. Vipers and all those, those are fine words. But the word ungodly means I don't have anything to do with God. I will do what I have to do. I'm going to do what I want. I don't have anything. God says he died for those. But you may say, Pastor, I'm, I'm not a bad person. I've never killed any animal or even ants. I help them. If I see an animal in the road, I help. I'm not as a bad person. I pay, I give my offering, I go to church, I amen, you know, I, everything I do, 
I read the word. But the heart, who can change the heart of man? Amen? The word of God is very straight. We have to be changed from the inside. And that is why there are the religion was created. Religion's purpose ultimately is this, that man will try to appease God on my own term. That's religion. That's why Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship. Christianity is different. God is communicating to man. By sending his son. Romans 5, 6, and 8 tells us as well, when you continue, now it is an extraordinary thing for one to willingly give his life, even for an upright man, though perhaps for a good man, one who is noble and selfless and worthy, someone might even dare to die. But God clearly shows at the last, the verse that we have, he proved, he showed his own love for us. Manifested, it says, that while we were yet still in our sins, we were sinners. Christ died for us already. Some people, when they realize this, they cry like babies at the cross. You know why? Because all the memories that they have, Lord, all the things, the bad things that they've done, all the things that they have done is so bad that God gave them the grace to live, to see another day so that that person will one day be at the foot of the cross. Perhaps most of us are not bad, but we know we've done something bad. That, that, that at the end of that, you say, Lord, don't strike me yet. Give me another chance. Don't strike me yet. Give me another chance. Oh, because why? It can't happen anytime. But God loves us that he gave. He gave while we were yet sinners. The bottom line, the price that God has given, Christ died for the sinners, you and me. We are all sinners. Yeah? Amen? We are all sinners. We are all sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. There's no way that we can do it. So if we summarize the word in Romans 5, 8, his love is this. His love is undeserved. We don't deserve it. His love is an, an equal. A father sending his son. Can you imagine that, my friend? Substituting his son to someone that is in prison or to be executed. Who among parents will do that? No one. But God the Father did it to the undeserving. And God is universal. What does universal mean? If you're in Guam, if you're in the Philippines, if you are in Panape, um, the Marshalls, in all the areas of the world, Yap, Chu, Palau, Cocos uh, Island, you're available. God is love. How do we respond to this? By accepting His love. How do you respond? By accepting the gift of love. Accept it. The wisdom is that, but the gift of God. Gift will stay gift unless it is accepted. Gift are not supposed to be paid. Just tell that to your girlfriend or boyfriend or your spouse or your husband. If, you're, if your wife gives you a gift, as a man, oh, I'm going to pay for my gift. Here's the receipt. No, boy, you're going to be in trouble. You cannot pay a gift. You violate the rule of gift giving. It is from the heart. Love in return. God, love God in return. Unless we are born, we cannot love him. Love in return. We love him because he first loved us. And so, therefore, when we begin to say God is love, Accept this gift, love God in return. It's in response. That's where we begin to understand this. We never had the inkling out to love him. He loved us first, so therefore, because he loved us, it's not a demand. It's still what? It is still a 
our own decision to love Him. But when we realize the price that He had to get, to give, to love us, amen? There's no such thing as not loving them. See, when you love someone, it's no longer work, right? When you love someone, when you do something, it is not out of obligation. It is out of love. And how many of you are raising kids? How many of you parents, your kids are always loving, patient, enduring, helping at home, cooking, everything? How many of you parents have those kind of kids? God bless you. Nobody raise their hand. And sometimes when those moments time, it says, why? No, you begin to question. But what do you do as a parent? You still love them. Amen? You don't say, if you don't shape up, <laughs> I can make another one like you, just like you. No, you don't do that. Yeah? You love them. <laughs> Why? Because it is the birth, it is the heart that is coming from the Father's love, depositing it to the parents, saying, you love. In a small example, illustration, the Father says, I love you, love them. Right? And that's why you love them. Why? You don't know. Why would I love you? I don't know, but I love you. Because God told me to love you. But if you don't shape up, I will love you anyway. God is love. And then it says here, because we love God, love others as well. Simple illustration of the God, the love of God. God is love. And you begin to say that, God, you love me, I love you, I love others. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Father, again, we thank you this morning. And I pray, God, that you would begin and continue as we, as we can talk about greater love. I ask God that you begin to remind us. While we have our eyes are closed, This month is Love Month. The highlight of those that are, have, are in a relationship, husband and wife, friends and maybe boyfriend, girlfriend, they will show their love. But ultimately, it won't be enough until we understand about God's love. Romans 3.23 says this, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But there's the good news. Romans 6.23 says this, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It's a gift because there's no way we can buy it. We cannot pay it. God has designed it that way to show His faithful love to each one. Us. It is a love that is not eros, it is not phileo, it is agape. Undeserved, unmerited love. Because we are all sinners, says he died for the ungodly. There's no way that we can pay him back. John chapter 3, verse 16 reminds again, for God so loved the world that he gave. Because when you love someone, you give. You have to give. Otherwise, it is empty promises. It's empty love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever will believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Doesn't make sense. Why would God the Father love the ungodly, offer His Son, give His Son, and to give them eternal life? But God's nature is love. That's why we say God is love. You cannot separate love from God because He created love. He, that is His very nature to love. And I thank God that's, what's, that is what, that's how it is because we failed in so many times. Revelation 3.20 says this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and, and hear it and, and open it, then I will what? I will come in. 
and I'm with him, and he, and he be with me. What do we do? First John chapter 1, verse 9, it says here, it says here, if you confess your sins, First John chapter 1, verse 9, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. And what? And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness because the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse us. Confession before man. No, before God, wherever you are, my friend, if, you're, if you are not yet, if you don't have a relationship, you cannot love someone because there will be time that that person will fail you. We only, we must have the love of God that looks beyond our faults, that looks beyond our frailties. All we need to do is confess. And it says here that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. The heart must confess through the mouth that he, God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. That's why we say, I love you from the bottom of my heart. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I didn't see anything there that says, do good works. Be religious. Be a church member. Pay your offering. Pray for someone. It's not there. All we need to do is this. Believe in our hearts and confess with our mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I'd like to invite you at this moment that God's Spirit, the Spirit of God will search us so that there will be the word God is love will have a, a different meaning from this point on. Amen. If that is your prayer, I'd like to ask you to follow along. And for the rest of us who have experienced the birth already, the, to be born again, let's help those. Can we do that? Let's help as we pray with them. Pray together along with them. Father, say that again. Father, what a great love you have for me. When I look back on the things that I've done, the life that I had lived. How can you love me? But I am so glad to hear that you love me beyond conditions. I confess that I'm a sinner. Guilty of separation from you. I ask you to forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ is God. He is the price that you have to pay for my salvation. Jesus, I thank you for your obedience to the cross. And you took my sins, punishments that I deserve. You took them and you care them. And you gave, gave your life for my forgiveness. And on the third day, you rose again. Proving that you are God, that you have completed the task for my forgiveness. So I open my heart. And I invite you, Jesus, to come to be my Savior and my Lord. Jesus, I accept you as my Savior 
and my Lord. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me of all my sins and adopting me as your child, not because of my being good, but because of Jesus Christ's sacrifice, the atonement for my sins. I am set free. I am forgiven. I am now a child of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And everyone will say, Amen and Amen. And amen. Amen. You can put your hands. God bless you. Did you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? God is love. So when you say God is love, you are the prize. But the prize is Jesus. Amen. If you have your emblem with you, please, I ask you, please, if you can stand along. Amen. Today's communion and mission Sunday. Stand along. Go ahead and and uh, pre prep up the first one. Just kind of flip uh, the first one for you. There you go. Amen. Amen. The night he was to be betrayed. Our Lord and Savior took a piece of bread. He blessed it. He broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father God, we thank you so much that Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, took our shame, took our punishment. He carried it on his body, the fulfillment of the prophets of Isaiah. He did not complain. He did not say a bad word, but instead he obeyed your will. Jesus, we thank you for the sacrifice that you have done our sins on your body. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, let us all partake of the emblem of the bread representing the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. After we reach the same matter, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took the cup. He blessed it and gave his disciples and said, Take, drink. This is the blood of the new covenant. The blood that will be shed even for all men so that your sins will be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, thank you. For us, Lord, we cannot afford to give sacrifices, but you did it anyway. You gave the Lamb of God, Jesus, to die for us. His blood was shed once and for all. Forgive us. Thank you for the prize that Jesus Christ has to bear for our sins and redemption. We give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Never will say. Amen and amen. Let us all partake of the emblem of the fruit of the vine, 
representing the shed blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Would you please just lift up your hands and just express to him the gratitude for loving us, the ungodly, the powerless, the sinners. I thank God. Father, we thank you. We thank you when we say you are love. You didn't just say it, but instead you presented to us the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. And Jesus, we thank you for your obedience to the cross because there is no other way that we can be saved. Holy Spirit, we want to thank you for constantly reminding us, teaching us your goodness. And I pray, God, Lord, that the price that Jesus Christ has paid, Lord, it will not be wasted, but instead help to live a life worthy of you in everything that we do, that we will love you, not because of compulsion, but because of gratitude. That we will serve you, not because of our responsibility, but because of gratitude. That we will love others with the same love that you have given to us. Lord, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the great love that you have given to us. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. And everyone will say, Amen and Amen and Amen. God bless you. You may be seated for a moment. Please thank you for being with us this morning. Amen. Before we, um, before we conclude later on, I'd like to, there are a couple of families that, that have lost loved ones. And so we just want to, if you don't mind, we want to pray for them. Uh, I don't see Annie. Is Annie here? Annie Katahai, her mom passed away uh, yesterday. And so we want to pray with them. But if, if not, then when she comes, we'll do that. And we'd like to call the, uh, the, the Castro family. If they can come, please. Their, their brother passed on um, recently, and they had a few. And if, if it's okay, can we call the family? This, this is a... This is a you can clump together in the front. Is that okay? All right. Let, give them the opportunity. We'll pray for them um, so we can. Amen. We'll pray for them. Come. And then we'll just pray alone. Some can go in the, in the, in the, on the other side if, if uh, they can. Would you extend your hands, please? And uh, Sister Lou, uh, uh, Brother Rocky, uh, Paul, and these are the main. These are the siblings. And how many are in the family, Sister Lou? Fourteen. Fourteen in their family. But there's always that when, when you lose someone, it is, it, is, it is still tragic. Amen? And they've been part of the church. The family has served us. And so would you extend your hands, please, and let's pray. Lord, again, we thank you, especially with uh, Sister Lou and, uh, and Paul and Rocky. And as they envelope the rest of the families with your goodness, and I pray, God, that in this time of great loss, that your spirit, your peace and comfort will surround them. Lord, we thank you that Ray had, has received you as his Lord and Savior that is in your presence. But in the meantime, God, there's no way that we can say it's easy, but you only, as you have loved us by sending your Son for us, you can send the love and the peace that transcends understanding to them. Comfort them, God, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Sister Lou, Paul, and Rocky, on behalf of the ALC, we please receive.
our prayer and, and comfort. God bless you all. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Where is uh, Howie? <laughs> all right. <laughs> All right, well, if you were blessed by the word this morning, can we put our hands together one more time for God's word this morning? Uh, God is love. You know what else is love? Righteous love. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But God is love, yeah? Well, if it's your first time, thank you for being here this morning. We want to welcome you on behalf of Pastor Howard, Pastor Judy. Can we put our hands together for our first time guests? Y'all could have been anywhere else in the world, but you are here this morning. And you know, here in Abundant Life Church, we like to travel around the world and learn different languages. So this morning, we're going to be in the island of Palau. And the way they greet there is Ali Ali. So turn to your neighbor, not Muhammad Ali, not Ali Baba. It's Ali Ali. So turn to your neighbor and say, Ali Ali. Yeah, Ali Ali. Yeah, Ali Ali. Yeah. So yeah, thank you for being here this morning. If you're online right now, thank you for joining us as well. Tune in next week and uh, follow us on Facebook, like, subscribe. And also, we, are, we got a YouTube channel. Yeah, I didn't know that till last night. So subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll have all the new videos up and going. You know what I'm saying? So subscribe, yeah. Well, just a couple of announcements for you this morning. First off, we got uh, CFM is live. We are going to be doing a live. We, we did our first live CFM service Friday. Yeah, and it's awesome, man. All the, the kids got skinny for some reason. <laughs> but yeah, CFM was awesome uh, Friday. Also, we have a couples fellowship. Uh, yeah, all the, all the couples out there, if you want to learn how to fold your clothes the, the right way, this is the fellowship you want to be in. Because they'll be teaching how to fold clothes, how to wash your laundry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just kidding. But yeah, couples fellowship is next month. So if you want to sign up, you can. It's in the back, in the foyer. Just uh, sign up if you want to join. Also, we have a statement of giving. Uh, Sister Menchi, are ready for pickup. So if you want to pick up your statements, just go uh, see Sister Menchi. If you don't know how she looks, right there. Beautiful. Yeah? And then we have live sales. If you haven't joined, if you haven't uh, plugged yourself into one of our live sales, you can. Just see one of our leaders, and we will plug you into one of our lives that's available. Then we got young adults. Young adults is uh, once a month. If you haven't, if you want to join the young adults, you can. Just see Pastor Brian. And then we got Don Watch. Don Watch is from Monday to Saturday, 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. All the powerful women of Abundant Life Church, they're always here every morning praying. So if you want to join, you can. And then there's Children's Church um, online resources. Go into our website. And it's there. And then you can, all those online, you can give online. Just scan our QR code, and it will direct you to our um, website. And you can give through PayPal, credit card, any other way made available for you. And then reserve. Reserve online because 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, somebody is already up at 4 o'clock waiting to reserve. <laughs> and I believe you get a prize if you're the first one to reserve. Yeah? So reserve online. And then finally, practice social distancing. That's, those are your announcements this morning. Uh, thanks, Howie. Th this afternoon, uh, we'll have the uh, baccalaureate, uh, baccalaureate for uh, the ISOM 2021. Three o'clock. Is it 28 students from different churches? 29 students will be graduating on the 21st of this month. These are the Bible school students, and they'll be getting ready for their ministries. Can you imagine? During the pandemic, they were able to continue and thanks so much for Pastor Jose and Irene. Thank you. God bless you. And so it's going to be at 3 o'clock today. And then, of course, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, graduation on the 21st. Now, uh, lastly, uh, last week I talked, preached about tithing, right? And everyone was, was uh, I, I, you, all of us were blessed. And most of the time after tithing, uh, this is a standard. Church's uh, giving goes down because some people don't like to hear about that. But you know what, brothers and sisters, last week's giving, amen, was more than twice, amen, uh, the, uh, yeah, you know why? Because we put somebody at the, uh, in, in front of them with a machete, if you don't give, no, no, I'm just kidding. But in other words, that, that, that is very uh, uh, so comforting that 
we all understand our responsibility. Of course, there are still many that, that are not yet, yet on, the, on board. God bless you. Thanks so much for being faithful to us towards uh, of God's resources. Amen. Let's all stand, and then we will pray for our tithes and offering, and then uh, we will, we will uh, conclude. Lord, again, we thank you so much. We thank you so much that you gave the best, Jesus Christ, and we, there's no way that we can pay you back or in any way because you have loved us first. But in our own little ways, oh God, we want to prove our love, a proof of our love towards you by giving you back the tithes and offering. And I ask God that you will open up the floodgates of heaven, pour out your blessings upon your people that continues to be faithful in the resources you have given to them. Lord, thank you so much. Flood them, oh God, that they will go around. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes space to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and may he give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And everyone will say, Amen. Amen. Lights up, please. Please come and give your tithes and offering unto the Lord, and we'll see you. We have some gifts for you. First timers, please, if you can stick around, we want to shake hands with you. But we have other stuff for you. God bless you. Yeah, today also is Mission Sunday, and so Pastor Judy Benjamin, God bless you.